justification by faith alone. Wasn't that the reason Paul wrote his letter to the Galatians? How important it should be for us to understand the meaning and the gift that comes from salvation through faith. Today we continue with studying the second chapter as a continuation of the last week's lesson. However, this week there is more theology and less stories. <laughs> it didn't take long for Paul to put it all in, on the table. Seven verses, starting from verse 15 in chapter 2, say so much. The author of the lesson says, This passage contains some of the most compressed wording in the New Testament, and it's extremely significant because it introduces us for the first time to several words and phrases that are foundational to understanding both the Gospel and to the rest of Paul's letter to the Galatians. These key words include justification, righteousness, works of law, belief, and not only faith, but even the faith of Jesus. This is basically what this lesson does. It looks through these keywords and we try to understand what Paul meant with them. We start with justification. It is no secret that Peter and Paul had an intense but at the same time truth-revealing discussion between each other. We get a short summary of what probably came out as a result from this talk between them in the passages that we will study this week. First, Paul talks about justification, and he repeats four times the term justification in verse 15 and 16. He speaks like a Jew, like someone who's born Jew, but as he says, knowing that the person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe Peter should have agreed with this statement. Let's leave Peter alone now. The problem there wasn't so much about different understanding, but about the intimidation in displaying it. Now the focus is on justification and righteousness. Please read through the lesson. The material is so well written, we can't properly summarize everything here. But if we have to, we can say that to justify means to declare someone innocent. The opposite of condemnation. But not only, but also the positive declaration of someone to being righteous. For the Jewish believer, it also had a more relational meaning uh, as it related to their relationship with God and also being part of the family of Abraham. So, about justification. In verse 16, Paul says three times that it can happen, it can be done through the works of the law. The lesson makes also a note that this phrase, works of the law, does not appear anywhere in the Old Testament but it doesn't appear also in the New Testament, apart and outside of the writings of Paul. But also it mentions that behind it, the meaning behind it also includes God's commandments given to Moses, be it ceremonial or moral. They were precious to every Jew and probably to some Christians. However, Paul is clear that there is no justification found in any attempt of obedience. So, where do you stand on keeping the law. Are you searching for any credits because of how well you keep the law? What is really Paul standing for? Paul is very clear. Know that a person is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So, we too have put our faith in Christ Jesus, that we may be justified by faith in Christ, and not by the works of the law. Because, by the works of the law, no one will be justified. So here's the question that I ask myself. Did the Jewish Christian undermine the importance of their faith in Jesus Christ for salvation? No, they didn't. But somehow they must have felt that it was insufficient. And obedience was just adding to, to complete the justification requirement. Paul was firmly against such teachings. His understanding was in the merits of Jesus' faithfulness for us, and we claim it through faith. Only what Jesus did for us saves us. Only what Jesus accomplished and what Christ accomplished in our behalf for us is what saves us. Only His works that He has done for us is what justifies us. His obedience to God was perfect, and in this way, it is the only way for salvation. <laughs> How much we need Paul 
to come maybe to one general conference session and talk to us. Sometimes we too are saying Jesus is important, but we need works as well. And there is nothing wrong to have good works, but the point is not there and should never be. Paul has such passion about this. It's distorting the gospel, he says. Nothing but the faithfulness of Jesus can make a difference. Not our best works, not our faith even. Our faith is our response to God, not our merit. After all said, what happens with our obedience? Oh, that sounds like faith promotes sin, isn't it? Not at all. Coming from the Old Testament is the understanding that faith is a response to God for His goodness and promises. For Paul, faith is a response to what Christ has done for us on the cross. This response affects the whole life of a person. It involves commitment, being crucified with Christ, being finished with our sinful ways. It is more like a relationship with Christ than a relationship with a law-based religion. Mm -hmm. Why is it so difficult for our nature to grasp that? If the works are not required, then we can do anything. <laughs> Why would we think this way? Maybe it's easier for a big sinner to accept and appreciate grace. Maybe it's easier for a great lawkeeper like Paul or Martin Luther to realize that this is not the gospel. Maybe it's a matter of personal experience and growth with God. But this experience with grace is a radical change. We are being crucified with God. It's a different world. It's a different thinking. It's about God and us, not about our deeds. How do you understand justification? Would you agree with Paul? The study continues next week with Old Testament faith.